if you are someone who is confused as what is VLSI and embedded and which field to make a career in, should I get into core electronics fields or take up IT job, then this video is for you. But in this video, we will have some brutal straight to the point facts. No sugar coating at all. In life, there will be times when you will have to make a firm decision. This or that, as they rightly say, never sail on two boats. And I firmly believe that one should always know initially what they are getting into, as you will mostly be pursuing the role you get in for a major part of your life. And if you don't like what you do, that's going to be really, really hard to deal with. So make sure to watch this video till the end and focus on every point I make. Also like and share this video so that we can keep building this community stronger. In the 2000s, there was an IT boom and everyone suddenly wanted computer science. But now this boom is dying out. But the good news is one boom ends and the other starts. Post AI, the demand for hardware powering AI has exponentially increased. And that has given a great boost to two major fields. VLSI and Embedded. In this video, let's mainly compare VLSI and Embedded fields using IT field as a baseline because most of you are very much familiar to the software field. After all, out of 5 people around you, 3 will be in the IT field, right? So comparing VLSI and Embedded to IT field will give you a better picture. Let's compare these fields on what exactly they work on and the skills required to get into these fields. Then we'll see the future growth aspects, say 5 to 10 years from now. And then let's compare the pros and cons of each field. And finally, the average salaries and the companies hiring for these fields. What do VLSI engineers actually do? In simple words, VLSI engineers literally turn sand into magic basically transforming silicon to powerful chips that drive the whole world. VLSI, that is very large scale integration, which is bringing billions of transistors together on a single chip. So whoever is involved in this process is a VLSI engineer. So all the powerful CPUs, GPUs for that matter, any processor you see around is made by VLSI engineers. In VLSI, you have RTL design, verification, DFT, and physical design. You can watch this video where I've explained about each of these roles in detail. Coming to embedded, what do they do? See, embedded engineers take the processor made by the VLSI engineers and develop a system on top of it. So any system that has a processor in it is an embedded system, which is developed by these engineers. So every electronic gadget you see around from your phones, smartwatches, smart ACs to cars, rockets and defense equipments are made by embedded engineers. You mainly have embedded software engineers and embedded hardware engineers. You can watch this video to know about all the different roles in embedded. And in IT field, as most of you already know, they develop apps, websites and upper layer softwares using electronic systems developed by VLSI and embedded engineers. Take a MacBook for example, the processor here, be it M1, M2 or M3 is made by VLSI engineers and then embedded people develop the system on top of it. They design and develop the firmware and low level software which enables M2 chip to communicate with various components such as memory, storage, input output interfaces. The low level firmware and the drivers for the chip is developed by embedded software engineers and embedded hardware engineers develop the whole motherboard with the chip embedded in it and complete all the connections to the peripherals. Now all these things are assembled and loaded with the OS and all the required drivers and is ready to use. Software engineers take this laptop and use it for software development like developing applications, websites, etc. Now remember this example as we will be using it further. Once we understand what they do in each field, we can understand the skills required for these fields. In VLSI, as you will be involved in designing the hardware, so you must definitely have good electronics basics. That is digital electronics, network theory, CMOS, basics of analog electronics, computer architecture, STA, and then languages to master are C programming, Verilog to model hardware, Tickle for EDA tools. You can watch this video where I've explained the complete roadmap in detail. When it comes to embedded, here all the focus is developing skills related to using microcontroller or the microprocessor. In embedded, as you will be coding the processor to control the electronics hardware connected, you will need both knowledge about low-level coding as well as basic electronics knowledge. So you should master C as it is the fastest and closest to the hardware. No assembly language programming, Know the protocols like UART, I2C and SPI. Have the ability to go through the data sheets. If you look closely, there is an intersect between embedded and VLSI. There are some topics which are common to both embedded and VLSI. Computer architecture, digital electronics and C programming. 
in simple words in vlsi your mindset should be like if you model any circuit you should be able to optimize it for the best area power and performance that is your speed for example if you write a very long code you should constantly be imagining the indirect hardware you are designing like you write a case statement you should know there will be a mux on the hardware now think what better can i do to make the speed faster while consuming less area and power in embedded your mindset should be writing efficient c codes as you will always have memory constraint every time you declare a variable think if it is really required can it be better optimized like if you declare int data type for a variable think if you really require four bytes of space for that variable or you're simply wasting it coming to the future growth aspects for these fields chips are the new fuel and drives the whole global economy they are important for every country as they are used in literally everything from cars rockets flights to defense equipment that's why we can see intense chip wars between countries and so every country is heavily investing on designing and manufacturing chips chips were already very important and as ai came into picture chips have become the most important thing for every country as the demand for ai increases so will the demand for hardware powering it and who will make these powerful hardware we electronics engineers that's why we can see hardware sector performing way better than any other sector out there now you very well understand the future for vlsi and embedded field as one designs the chip and one develops the final system around it now let's compare it with the it field ai has impacted it jobs and for now the entry level software jobs have had a significant hit because of ai but the question is if ai can impact it field why cannot it impact vlsi and embedded field see when i say ai will have an impact on software jobs i mean impact on conventional coding basically what is programming using a language you communicate your logic to the computer to do a specific task earlier only a few knew these languages and the barrier was too huge knowing the logic alone was not sufficient you had to know the syntax of every language but now because of ai these languages have been simplified to a great extent knowing the logic alone is enough now you need not learn the syntax of every other language now you can take ai's help and migrate to any language easily only knowing these languages alone are of no use now in vlsi or embedded you can't just take up a 3 months dsa course and get it you need to know electronics basics of physics and then use that knowledge to code and model hardware so the fields where the main and the only usp is that i know a particular language to make general applications or websites that will go obsolete and will be replaced by ai but fields like ai ml data science cyber security vlsi and embedded will not be impacted by ai you can see ceos of top software companies coming out and telling that yes conventional coders are getting replaced at every level talking specifically about the impact of ai on vlsi and embedded take my word it is almost impossible for ai to replace chip designers two main reasons for that first see developing chips is a very very complex job and it needs years of learning and if you remember the example of mac M1 M2 or M3 chips are very very complex to make and there is no scope of making any kind of mistake in making the chip take any application or a website if it has a bug it can be incrementally solved by just giving some software updates right but if you consider the chip if there is any kind of defect in the functionality there is no way of fixing it and the company loses billions of billions of dollars that is why the chip making process is rigorous and has no scope of mistakes so the integration of ai becomes limited second as i said earlier you need years of learning and specialization to design chips and for ai to use all these electronics and physics concepts properly to design complex chips it will require a very solid and a very powerful hardware and who will make them hardware engineers so it becomes a loop more and more ai does the complex job more and more will it require powerful hardware okay now let's compare pros and cons of all these fields first barrier to entry remember our mac laptop we had apps websites built using mac on the upper level and then we integrated the mac and then as we go further down we had the chip m1 m2 m3 whatever it is the complexity of development increases as we go down and the barrier to entry is directly proportional to the complexity the more complex it becomes the more tough it will be as a fresher to enter the field the barrier to entry is lowest for software jobs 
medium for embedded jobs and highest for VLSI jobs. See, low barrier to entry is both a good and a bad thing for a field. Good thing because you can easily get into that field. But if it is easy, many people will get in, making you replaceable to new talent and AI. If the barrier to entry is high, then to get in, it may be very tough. But once you get in, replacing you will be a tough job. Second, number of openings. If you see the number of openings, the software field is a clear winner with a lot of job openings, followed by embedded and then VLSI. But even though the job openings are too many, you should also consider the number of people applying for it. Every other branch student from mechanical, civil, chemical prepare for IT jobs. But to get into VLSI or embedded, you cannot take a three months course and get in. As I said earlier, you need specializations to get in. It becomes tough for an electronic student only to get in. Forget about other branches. Third, work-life balance. Again, as the complexity increases, the working hours obviously increase. In general, IT field has a better work-life balance, followed by embedded and then VLSI. Now coming to companies hiring, in VLSI, as you will be involved in designing chips, you have all the semiconductor companies hiring like NVIDIA, Apple, AMD, Qualcomm, TI, Google Hardware. The core software companies like Microsoft, Meta and Amazon have also started making their own hardware. So even they hire for VLSI engineers now. And for embedded, there are two major industries you can be. That is into semiconductor industry or consumer electronics industry. The skills required and the work embedded engineers do in these two industries are different. You can watch this video to know more about it. All the semiconductor companies mentioned above hire for embedded roles as well. And in consumer electronics, you have companies like Honeywell, Collins Aerospace, Bosch, Philips hiring for embedded. Coming to the salaries, this is going to hurt some people, but all the top companies pay way more to a hardware engineer than a software engineer at the same level in the same company. This is in general, but there might be a few corner cases here and there. The average salaries of VLSI engineers is highest followed by embedded and IT engineers. And in the coming days, I think this difference is going to increase even more. The final conclusion here is never play the short game, play the long one. Don't force yourself into something just because everyone is doing it or for the initial package. If you love what you do, you'll become the best and sustain and eventually make good amount of money. Let me know in the comments if you like this video and let me know which field you want to make a career in. You can check the Discord Chipcam community link in the description below. See you in the next one.